Hi everyone. The goal of this video is to apply yesterday's vocabulary to different types of problems. So just a reminder of what we learned yesterday is we learned theorems about central and inscribed angles and the arcs that intercept them. So central, inscribed, we'll just write this off to the side, although you should have it in your notes so we have it for the rest of the video. So what we learned about central angles is their measure is the same as their intercepted arcs. And inscribed angles, the measure is half of the intercepted arc. I'm abbreviating this definition slightly, but you should have those formally in your notes already. Okay, so to look at letter A of an example of how to apply this, you have this angle here, and you want to find the measure of angle A. Okay, so first you want to identify what type of angle it is you're trying to find. So this angle here is bounded by these two lines. It's created by those two lines, so we're looking for that angle. And you want to decide, is this a central angle or an inscribed angle? And you need to know the vocab definitions to determine that. So a central angle is an angle that has its vertex, or like middle, at the center. And an inscribed angle has its vertex on the edge of the circle. So this one is an inscribed angle because it's not at the center, it's at the edge. Whereas if I take a different highlighter, a central angle would be an angle such as the one that's attached to the center right here. So the blue one is the central angle, the yellow one is the inscribed angle. Okay, so we learned that the central angle has a measure the same as its arc or as its intercepted arc. So if this is a central angle and it's 130, its intercepted arc is the arc that shares the same two endpoints, which would be right here. And that measure is also 130. Now the inscribed angle is half of its intercepted arc. So if this is my inscribed angle right here, okay, its endpoints are also right here. So this is its intercepted arc. So the inscribed angle measure is half of its intercepted arc. So it'd be half of 130, which would be 65. And that's how you'd go about solving a problem about central and inscribed angles. Let's look at a couple different types of examples to kind of apply what we know to things we've learned before or to just more complicated situations. So we know you see a quadrilateral that's inside the circle here. We call this an inscribed quadrilateral. And it's inscribed because it's inside the circle, but now we can realize that it's inscribed because it's made up of a bunch of inscribed angles. So let me show you an example here. An inscribed angle, again, has its um, center, whoa, has its center on the edge of the circle. So like, for example, this angle right here, if you ignore everything else and just outline this, angle X is an inscribed angle because it centers on the edge of a circle. Okay, so you kind of have to ignore the rest of the quadrilateral to see that and just focus it on one angle. But that would be an inscribed angle. And we know an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So we need to figure out what the intercept arc is of this angle X. And angle X has its endpoints right here of that ray and right here of that ray. So its intercepted arc is the one that's across from it. So this would be its intercepted arc from one endpoint to another. And if you can think about it, it's kind of like the crust of that slice of pizza. Okay, so this created one slice of the pizza in some way or the other. So angle X will be half of the measure of its intercepted arc, which I'm going to outline in a different color, be this one here. Now I don't know the measure of this green arc, but I do know the measure of two of its pieces. So if I add them together, I can get the measure of the, measure of the whole arc. So 140 plus 90 will give me 230. So the whole green arc is 230. And then X is half of the measure of that arc. So half of 230, I should write this work out, 230 divided by 2 will give me 115. So angle X is 115 because it's half the measure of its arc. Okay, I can also do Y with the similar reasoning. So I'm just going to erase everything I've drawn there and focus just on Y. So Y is also an inscribed angle because its vertex is on the edge of the circle. So this is what makes angle Y here. Okay, so angle Y again is half of the measure of its intercepted arc, which the intercepted arc is created from the endpoints of Y and it's across from Y, so it's this arc here. 
And what is the measure of that arc? Well, if I take 40 and 140 together, that gives me 180. So the whole arc is 180, which means the arc across from it is going to be half, or excuse me, the angle across from it is half, which is going to be 90. Now, it's just a coincidence that those are the same, because I said this was 115, but is this angle also going to be 115? Probably not, because this one's obtuse and this one's acute. So it's just a coincidence that those are the same. And let's go ahead and just find this one to finish off our quadrilateral. Um, there are two ways you can do this. One, all the angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360. So since you know this is 90, this is 90, and this is 115, well, 90 plus 90 gives you 180. If you add 115 to that, you get 295. And 360 minus 295 will give you an angle of 65. Or you could find, like, the arc and then find half of that. But I knew all the angles in quadrilateral added 360, so that seemed easier. Now, one thing you should notice is while the opposite angles are, con are not congruent, so 115 and 65 are not the same, we do know that the opposite angles are supplementary. So this angle plus this angle, 90 plus angle Y equals 180. Because angle Y is also 90, which equals 180. And also, these two angles are supplementary. So 65 plus 115 also equals 180. So that's like x plus the other angle. So opposite angles in an inscribed quadrilateral are always supplementary, something that you should note. I want to give you an example of a DARA problem or two if we have time, um, just to show you how you can apply this to an algebraic situation. Okay, so I want to take a look at part C. And C, you want to see if you can label some stuff on the picture that's helpful to solving the problem. And then we'll go ahead and set up our equation, our reason, and our answer. So in this picture, I know that these two have these markings, which means these angles are congruent. I know this 115 is the measure of this arc. And I know 3x plus 13 is the measure of this arc up here. And that's all I know. So I'm going to start using some of my vocabulary and theorems to solve for what I don't know. For example... I know that this angle here is a central angle because its vertex is at the center. So if its vertex is at the center, it's a central angle. That means its measure is the same as the intercepted arc, which would be this arc here. It's the one across from it. So this measure is 115. And if this is 115 and these are marked congruent, then this is also 115. What else do I know? I know that the total angles in a circle are 360 degrees. So I already have 115 um, two times. How many degrees do I have left to make 360? Well, 115 plus 115 gives me 230. So I have 230 used. I have a total of 360. How many degrees are left? Well, 360 minus 230 will give me 130. So that means this piece right here has to be 130. Because if I take 130, 115, 115, add them up, I'll get 360. Okay, so now I have enough information to set up my DARA problem. My goal here is to solve for x. So I need to use this to set up an equation to solve for x. So I know I'm going to use that 13x plus 13. In order to set up an equation, I need an equal sign. So what does 13x plus 13 equal? Well, I know that, again, that's an arc. And across from that arc is a central angle. This is a central angle because it's attached to the center. And the theorem is that the measure of the arc is the same as central angle. So if this is the measure of the arc, it's the same as a central angle. And what's a math word for the same? It means equal. So I can set 13x plus 13 equal to 130 because the central angle is the same as the arc. Now my reason should explain why I set these equal. And the reason is not because I want to solve for x. The reason is what geometry theorem told me that this is a true statement. And that theorem is the central, actually I should say the measure of the central angle. Measure of the central angle is equal to, is equal the measure of the intercepted arc. Okay, it's that theorem I've been talking about this whole video. Okay, now I set up the equation. I stated the reason. 
All you have to do is solve for x now, which I have confidence you can solve this algebraic equation. So I'm going to leave that for you to do on your own when the video is done. I'm going to try and set up D for you as well, and that will be our last problem in the video. So first I want to identify what information I have. So I know the measure of this angle is 9x minus 7. It's not a number, it's an equation, that's okay. The measure of the arc from here to here is 17x minus 2. It's not a number, it's an equation, but that's okay. It still represents the measure of that arc. So how can I relate this piece of information to this piece of information? To answer that, it would be helpful to identify what type of angle this angle is. So, I'm going to outline it. Is it attached to the center of the circle, or is the vertex attached to the edge of the circle? Okay, it's definitely not in the center, because the center is over here. So it's got to be attached to the edge, which means this is an inscribed angle. Okay, so C was central angles. This uses inscribed angles. And what do I know about an inscribed angle? Well, I know the measure is half the size of the opposite arc. Okay, so this angle is half the size of this here. That's the theorem. Or you can say two of these equals this. Okay, because this is double the size of that. So that's going to influence what my equation is to figure out how to solve for x. So two of these angles equals this. Or you can say half of this equals that. But I find that I don't like to work with fractions. So I'm going to say 2 times 9x minus 7. So 2 of the inscribed angles equals 1 of the arc, 17x minus 2. And you can even write that down. 2 inscribed angles equals 1 arc. And that's what I've written here. This is inscribed angle. This is arc. Okay, you can solve that on your own when the video is completed, but I'm going to talk about the reason. So the reason should explain why I set the equation up the way I did. And the reason is the theorem that the measure of an inscribed angle is half the intercepted arc. That's the geometry theorem that tells you to do what I did up there. So it's not equal to like a central angle, it's half. Another way you could write this is technically I can say it's half of the arc. So if the arc is 17x minus 2, I can say 17x minus 2 divided by 2 equals the angle. But that seems, again, like it's going to require more algebraic work. That's why I like to write it this way. Um, it's up to you. You solve it with whichever way you want. But that's how you'd set up some algebraic problems using the theorems we've talked about in this video. So by now, you should be comfortable with central and inscribed angles. I want you to finish both, both of these problems, and then you can try some of the problems on the back, and please ask questions.